Let's talk now about releasing your brakes, especially your mental brakes. What we know is that you have enormous potential and possibilities that you have not yet begun to tap into. Now, most people have mental blocks that hold them back, whether they know about them or not. Many of these mental blocks are unconscious, so they can't deal with them. Your ability to identify your mental blocks and to release them is essential to you becoming everything that you are capable of becoming. Now, the discovery of what we're going to talk about in this session changed my life in a profound way and has changed the lives of more than a million people. And this is what I discovered when I began to study this many years ago. I find that negative emotions of all kinds are the primary reason why people are unhappy and ineffective. If you had no negative emotions, you'd be happy all the time. So your ability to understand your negative emotions and to learn how to release them will free you to accomplish far more than you ever imagined. Negative emotions drain your energy, make you tired, take away your creativity, hurt your relationships, and have nothing good at all. And overcoming and eliminating negative emotions is the key to your future. In this session, you're going to learn how you can pull the plug on most of your negative emotions, how you can become a completely positive person almost instantly. You're going to learn how to liberate yourself from feelings of anger and fear and guilt and resentment that may have been holding you back in the past. You're going to learn a series of tested, proven techniques that you can apply to free your mind and release your brakes and unlock your potential. So let's begin. Self-responsibility is essential to peak performance and personal leadership, as we've talked about before. And I cannot emphasize this too much because it's so important. Self-responsibility is the foundation of high levels of self-esteem, self-respect, and personal pride. Without self-responsibility, you have no self-esteem and no respect and no personal pride. Self-responsibility is the key to a feeling of control, a feeling of mastery, and a feeling of personal power. Now, high responsibility versus low responsibility. Let's look at this. At high levels of personal responsibility, you have high levels of control. In fact, there's an equal sign between responsibility and control. At the bottom, feelings of irresponsibility lead to feelings of a lack of control, stress, tension, and negativity. An attitude of irresponsibility is the root of all negative emotions. And negative emotions distort your personality in many ways. So let me explain to you what I call the negative emotion tree. If you can imagine a tree growing up with fruit in the branches, and these fruit are the negative emotions that most people experience. They experience negative emotions of resentment and jealousy and envy and fears of all kinds. But the ultimate expression of negative emotions is anger. And it's either anger that is expressed outwardly toward other people or anger that is expressed inwardly, making yourself unhappy. Anger is the ultimate expression of negative emotions. Now, if you can imagine that this tree has a root system which supports and nourishes the negative emotion fruits in the tree. Well, the two roots that support the negative emotion tree, the first is what is called justification. Justification is necessary for you to have a negative emotion of any kind. In justification, you tell yourself and other people that you are entitled to this negative emotion. You have paid for it, you have earned it, someone has hurt you, and this negative emotion is justifiable. If you cannot justify a negative emotion, it stops immediately. Now, the second factor that nourishes negative emotions is called identification. This is where you take something personally, where something happens and you take it personally and you become angry and upset. Now, my wife and I, whenever we think of something like this in uh, the world, we say, it's not our problem. 
And most things in life are not your problem. But if you take them personally, what happens is you can become angry and emotional about them. The rule is that if you can't identify with a person or situation, you can't get emotionally involved. If there's a problem within your own household, within a family member, you'll be identify and get emotionally involved. If there's a problem within the household of a person who lives in Bangladesh, you have no emotion at all because you have no identification with that person. What is the key? The key is to practice non-judgmentalism. What does that mean? It means that you refuse to pass judgment. You see, if you judge another person or situation for any reason, you set yourself up as the court and the executioner. Whenever you judge other people, you find them guilty. When you find someone guilty for something, you become angry with them and you want to punish them. So every single religious philosophy says, don't judge other people. In the Bible, it says, judge not, that you be not judged. In other words, don't judge other people, and you, and you can hope that other people won't judge you at the same time. When you stop judging, your negative emotions stop. A second thing you can do to eliminate negative emotions is you can practice what is called detachment. Now, the entire religion of Buddhism is built on detachment, where you meditate and you detach emotionally from a negative event. You say that negative event is occurring, occurring, but it doesn't affect me. It's not my problem. There's nothing that I can do. Or you can just say, I refuse to become emotional about this situation. By the way, you'll find that leaders are very good at practicing detachment even when the negative situation affects their business or their company. I have worked with top executives of major companies over the years. And I have noticed that whenever they experience a negative situation, a reversal, a problem of some kind, they take a deep breath and they become calm. It's not that they don't care, it's just that they know that if they become emotional, they will not be able to deal with the situation in an intelligent way. It's the same thing with you. Whenever you have something go wrong, take a deep breath, and just become calm and detach yourself from the emotion so that you can think clearly. Now, if you imagine this negative emotion tree, the trunk of the tree is blame. You see, blame is the greatest single cause of negative emotions, unhappiness, and psychosomatic illness in the world. It is impossible for you to have a negative emotion unless you can blame someone or something else for the problem. Unhappy people are always thinking about their problems and who is to blame. In fact, almost all psychology, psychotherapy, counseling is aimed at helping people to stop blaming someone else for something that happened earlier in their life. Blame is the major reason for unhappiness, failure, and shortened lifespans in our world today. Now, if you want to eliminate negative emotions, what you do is you have to eliminate the emotion of blame. The instant that you stop blaming, all your negative emotions stop. I want you to imagine that your negative emotion tree is like a Christmas tree, and the lights in the Christmas tree are your negative emotions. Well, if you want to turn out the lights in a Christmas tree, what do you do? You pull the plug and all the lights go out simultaneously. How can you pull the plug on your negative emotion tree so that all your negative emotions stop automatically? And this is one of the most important principles you will ever learn. There is a law, a mental law, called the law of substitution. Now this law says that you can only hold one thought in your mind at a time, positive or negative. You cannot hold two thoughts at the same time. So you can hold a positive thought, or a negative thought. Now, if you want to get rid of a negative thought, you can knock it out of your mind by replacing it or substituting for it a positive thought. And the positive thought that you use to eliminate negative emotions are the words, I am responsible. I am responsible. I am responsible. Here is the incredible breakthrough. 
The only thing between you and the happiness that you desire in any part of your life is negative emotions. And negative emotions cannot survive without blame. Blame are like the oxygen that keeps them alive. And you can short circuit negative emotions by simply accepting responsibility. The minute that you accept responsibility, all your negative emotions stop. Just like unplugging the lights from a Christmas tree. It's impossible to say I am responsible and feel negative at the same time. If you can think of anything in your life where you're angry, just take and say, wait a minute, I am responsible. I am responsible. I am responsible. And one of the things I learned is that your intelligence can cut both ways. Your intelligence can help you or hurt you. Now, I want you to use your intelligence from now on to find reasons to accept responsibility. Find reasons not to express negative emotions. For example, let us say that you had a bad investment and somebody cheated you and you lost your money. You're justifiably probably very angry about it. How do you eliminate the negative emotions involved with a past event? Well, what you do is you say, wait a minute, I am responsible. I made the decision. I did not do enough background checking. I gave him the money. I hoped that I would make a profit or a big profit. But when you find reasons to accept responsibility, you stop blaming. When you accept responsibility in anything in your life, all the negative emotion stops. And the way you accept responsibility is that whenever you think of something that makes you angry, you immediately neutralize it, cancel it by saying, wait, I am responsible. You see, no progress in your life is possible with your negative emotions intact. The great block that stands between you and a fabulous life is just the negative emotions. Negative emotions act like brakes. It's almost like have you ever had the experience where you're driving your car down the road and the car is going very slowly and, and sounds very badly and you step on the gas and it goes faster and you take your foot off the gas and it immediately slows down and you're thinking, what's wrong with my car? And then you realize you've left the emergency brake on. You take off the emergency brake and the car just runs rapidly. Well, negative emotions are like an emergency brake that's locked on. It's like trying to drive your life with your foot on the brakes. No matter how hard you step on the accelerator with your foot on the brakes, you make very little progress in life. So one of the keys is to eliminate the expression of negative emotions. When you talk about a negative situation, it is like throwing gasoline on a fire. The negative emotions grow and grow bigger and bigger. But when you refuse to express negative emotions, refuse to talk about them, refuse to discuss them with someone else, the negative emotions, like a fire, without fuel, eventually die away. Only positive emotions enhance and uplift your life. So your job is to find reasons not to express negative emotions and to express positive things in their place. Your job is to use the law of substitution to keep your mind on what you want and to keep it off of what you don't want. Interestingly, I have done a series of courses on how to hire people in business, especially in management. One of the things I discovered was this, is that when you interview a person, you ask them what were some of the problems or difficulties you've had in the past? And they will say they had this problem or they got fired from this job or something else. Then you ask them, how do you feel about that experience? And then you listen. Well, you'll find that top people will say, well, I learned a lot from that experience that will help me to be better in the future, and this is what I learned. Average people will blame their boss. They're not responsible. They will be negative about their previous job. They'll be negative about the reason that they were laid off or fired. So the rule is always hire people who have learned from a previous experience, not people who are still angry and blaming someone else. Now, you're talking about releasing your brakes. Here's a very interesting point. Imagine that you had bought a brand new car from the factory and it was delivered and you went down to pick it up. The car was perfect in every way, maybe a Mercedes Benz. And you got into the car, but somehow, in building the car, 
they had put in one of the brakes in reverse so that the brake was locked on for in, in one of the front wheels. So you get in your car and you start up the engine and you step on the gas. If one of your front wheel brakes was locked in place, what would happen to you? And the answer is simple. If one of your front wheel brakes was locked, you'd go around in circles around that wheel. You, and no matter how much you stepped on the gas or twisted the wheel, you'd keep going around in circles. My point is this, is that one major negative emotion that you refuse to give up can cause your life to go around in circles for years. Whenever I discuss this idea of accepting responsibility and eliminating negative emotions, everyone says, yes, I agree. That's a good idea. I'm going to do it. And then privately to themselves, they say, but there's one negative emotion, one negative person or experience I am not going to let go. I have paid for that. I have suffered for that. And so I'm going to hold on to that. I will smile on the outside, but inside I'm going to keep that negative emotion. Do you know what that means? It's like having one front wheel locked and your life will go around and around. I've met people who have had a bad marriage or a bad relationship. And 10 years later, they are still angry. And because they're angry, they never meet another person. Or if they do meet another person, the other person runs away. They don't want anything to do with them. I've met people who've made a bad investment and ever after they're too afraid to make investments again. So ask yourself, what is the biggest single area of negativity in your life and what can you do to release it? Remember, one negative emotion can sabotage your whole future. Psychologists and psychotherapists work with people for months to help them confess the negative emotion that is holding them back. And once they can deal with that one negative emotion, suddenly their brakes are released and they're free to accomplish extraordinary things. Your job is to realize that your highest goal is to be happy. And the way that you become happy is you leave your negative emotions behind and get on with the rest of your life. Then encourage others to accept responsibility as well. You'll find that there's many people around you who are complaining and criticizing. They had negative relationships, difficult childhoods, bad business adventures, and so on. And they talk about them and think about them all the time. However, if you keep thinking and talking about something negative that happened in the past, it's like continually putting new fuel on the fire. You keep the fire going all the time. So, most people will say, yes, I would like to give up my negative emotions, but what's the problem? Here's what I discovered, is that people fall in love with their suffering. People love their suffering. They feel that because of my childhood, I suffered, and I've paid for that, and I have bought it, and I own that suffering, and you are not going to talk me out of it. You are not going to get me to give up my suffering. I have suffered for years, and I'm going to hold on to it. So the answer is to encourage them and you to leave your negative emotions like a bag of garbage by the side of the road and move on. Now whenever somebody comes to you and they complain and they say, I have this problem, I have that problem, you give them what we call the advice. And this is the advice that's going to make you a very helpful and positive person. Whenever someone has a problem, you can listen and nod and then you say, yes, I hear you but you are responsible, what are you going to do about it? You're responsible, what are you going to do about it? Now, people have two different reactions. One will say, yes, but, and give you all their excuses. The other one will say, yes, you're right. I should decide what to do and take action. When my wife and I talk about this, she'll say that she had lunch with a friend who has a problem. And I'll say, what did you do? And she says, I gave her the advice. And now all over the world, people say, yes, I had a problem or a friend with a problem. I just gave them the advice. Give other people the advice. You are responsible. What are you going to do about it? And take the advice yourself. Now, each person has a series of hot buttons. Uh, I want to give you a picture that I learned from a friend of mine. Imagine that on your chest, you have a series of buttons that are red buttons and green buttons. Whenever you push a green button or you think that thought, 
about that person or situation, you're happy. It makes you happy. People that you love, great experiences that you've had. When you push a red button, it makes you angry, instantly angry. You're almost like a switchblade knife. Your anger immediately comes up. These red buttons are memories of negative experiences that you had in the past. Whenever you hear them, you get angry. So the key to dealing with negative emotions, which are memories from the past, is for you to prepare in advance of those emotions. So you think of a person whose name makes you angry because of something that happened in the past, and what you do in advance, you say, the next time I think of that person, I'm going to be calm and confident and positive. I'm not going to allow myself to become angry. You see, the only way that you can change your emotions is by pre-programming yourself in advance of the emotional experience. So every time you think of that person, you think of yourself as being calm and positive and confident. And by doing this, what you do is you, you take out or you pull the wires on the red button. And eventually what will happen is that person's name or picture will come up and you will think of them with complete neutrality. You'll have no emotions at all about a person who in the past made you very, very angry and unhappy. Try this and see if it works because it works for everyone. You see, here's the question. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Maybe somebody did something to you that really hurt your feelings, that really made you angry, it made you unhappy, and what the person did was wrong. They lied to you, they deceived you, they cheated you, they hurt you for no reason, and you, of course, are a very good person, and you did not deserve it. All right? Get over it. This is what happens to all human beings in life, is that they are cheated and deceived and lied to and hurt by other people. The only question is, what do you do about it? And the key to self-esteem, self-respect, and personal pride is for you simply to release your brakes. Say, wait a minute, I am responsible. I got myself into the situation. And even if you are innocent, you can say, I am responsible for my responses. And I'm going to respond in a positive way. By accepting responsibility and neutralizing your negative emotions, you can change your life forever. Now, here are some questions that you can ask and answer. Question number one, what are three negative experiences that you have had where you complain and criticize and blame other people for unhappy events in your life? Write down those three previous experiences. Number two, what are the two essential factors that are necessary for negative emotions to grow based on what we just talked about? Number three, list three negative experiences in your life, past or present, that make you angry when you think about them. Number four, list three ways that you can practice detachment, refusing to identify with a negative person or situation and keep yourself positive. Number five, list three areas where you can eliminate negative emotions by stopping blaming someone for something and accepting complete responsibility. Number six, what can you say to yourself to stop yourself from expressing negative emotions? This is really important. And number seven, what are the three benefits or advantages to you of becoming a happy, self-responsible person? And finally, what one action are you going to take immediately as a result of what you have learned in this session? Now, stop the lesson at this point and answer these questions.